Dream lose 78 to 73 against the Washington Mystics. Let's get into it, I guess. Now, most of us had Washington being one of the top teams this season, of course, but uh, nobody had Atlanta in the same place, now did we? But with Ryan Howard, all things are possible. Additional focus on Cheyenne Parker as well, who, over the last two games before this, was apparently averaging 14 points and a shooting percentage of 55, even if it did only come against Indiana. No disrespect to Indiana, of course. Alina Deladon was not playing because of a back injury, which is pretty good for Dream fans, but Shakira Austin, however, is healthy, which is not good for Dream fans. She had 25 points spread out over her first four games, and then 20 in her last game alone. The rookies are just really going to be the big story going into this year. Atlanta rocking the best third jerseys in the entire league, I don't care what anyone says, though I didn't really like the fact that Washington was countering it with uh, their dark jerseys. I mean, I know everyone can tell the difference between red and dark gray with the blue trim, but still, it just seems a little off to not have one of them wearing white, although at this point, that's really just a nitpick. Still, White Tee, that, that Franchise Boys song from all those years ago, that was playing during some dream possessions. And if they're playing that, in that case, then really, what the hell is the point of wearing anything but white? I appreciate how the home broadcast is showing the Atlanta Dream in the right colors this time. And on top of that, they're using their alternate logo, which I've been seeing an awful lot of lately. And you know what? I kind of like it better than their current logo anyway. The current logo looks more like a soccer logo than anything else. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it just doesn't really seem to fit, especially along with the rest of the logos in the WNBA. I know you gotta set yourself apart, but still. Also, hey, hell of a stat there for Ryan Howard, 7th WNBA player with 100 points in her first 5 games. First quarter, Shakira Austin draws first blood 15 seconds in. Early first points is not something we've been seeing a whole lot of in Dream games just yet. And really, Shakira Austin became the star of the show pretty much all quarter long. She gets the Mystics way ahead of the Dream. Atlanta isn't letting it get too far away though. They're being patient, you know, playing small ball while Washington is being very in your face about it. Uh, that patience pays off as Ryan Howard gets fouled pretty damn hard, but still sinks all three of her free throws. Ari McDonald then comes from out of nowhere and sinks a two-pointer. Suddenly it's 18-19. The Dream have a chance to take the lead for the first time, which Ryan Howard does exactly that, hitting the three-pointer to give Atlanta a 21-19 lead with just under three minutes left in the first. At the end of the first, Mystics come back 27-25. It's basically the Ryan Howard and Shakira Austin show at this point. They're hitting all their field goals. The points are 15-8 with the advantage going to Ryan Howard. Going to the second quarter here, a lot of back and forth action to start the second. The Mystics and the Dream just keep trading the lead with not a lot of foul action, unlike in the first quarter. Roughly halfway through the second, though, that starts to change. Points keep coming in, but fouls keep coming in as well, especially at the expense of Atlanta, and it's really helping Washington stay and stay with it. Fortunately, Ryan Howard is still the undisputed champion of escaping defensive coverage, at least for now, and Cheyenne Parker is really not too far behind. Late in the second, Ryan Howard already matched her points total from her last game in Indiana and has made more shots. Unfortunately, though, two minutes left and she had to sit out of the first half. She got called for her third foul, and she's not convinced that it really should have gone to her, and really, I'm not really sure if uh, anyone would disagree with her. I don't really know who it should have gone to, but fortunately her team wasn't too terribly affected by it. Atlanta's death keeps the game tied at the half with 44 all. To start the third, Atlanta goes on a 12-0 run with Howard, Parker, and Wheeler just absolutely running the show here, and the rest of the team is starting to tighten up their defense as well. Washington goes almost six minutes without a single point until Ariel Atkins scores two with three minutes left. Unfortunately, Atlanta would go on their own little dry spell. Uh, Ryan Howard gives us a little bit of a scare, taking a bump late in the third and is pretty slow to get up. Fortunately, she's okay. She's just tired. Apparently, she played pretty much the entire quarter up to that point. Point production is way the hell down for her. She only scored two throughout nine whole minutes there. Uh, hey, credit Washington's defense, though, but don't sell Atlanta's depth too short for keeping them in the lead. 58-54 dream after three. Starting the fourth quarter, Washington is not letting Atlanta do a whole lot. Very little points, but a lot of turnovers. A lot of missed shots, including several in short succession. They relied mostly on free throws for their point production in the first half of the fourth quarter. Then things started getting a little bit chippy there. Atlanta's scoring, but Washington is keeping up. They were never trailing by more than a possession or two. Both teams are at their most aggressive than at any other point in this game, and it'll stay that way for pretty much the entire rest of the game. During a scrum for the ball, though, Shakira Austin accidentally hits Cheyenne Parker in the face with her knee. Total accident, nobody's fault, but she did take some time getting up. Fortunately, she seemed okay. 
And hey, she was even healthy enough to win the jump ball after that, even though nothing really came out of it, because Washington is really crowding the crap out of the paint. Really, really close game in the final two minutes. Points are really hard to come by, but they are keeping it close. A single possession separating them at any point here. One minute left, dream ball. Erica Wheeler gets an absolutely critical two points to give Atlanta a one-point lead that was the 19th lead change in this game, and she becomes the fourth dream player with double-digit points. Then, in the dream zone, Nas Hillman goes in for a rebound, but instead all she gets is a loose ball foul. Tiana Hawkins stays perfect at the three free throw line, giving Washington a one-point lead. She was five for five with her free throws at that point. Neither team can afford a foul at this point, but Atlanta does it anyway. Natasha Howard sinks both of her free throws. The Mystics lead by three with 19 seconds left, and Atlanta fouls again. Atkins sinks two, the Mystics lead by five, and they held on for the final six seconds, and the Dream lose 78 to 73. Now, the silver lining here is that Atlanta is such a young team that this can really only help them moving forward, especially regarding staying out of foul trouble. Uh, the next game is Tuesday in Washington, and I don't know if Alina Deladon is going to be ready, but if she is, then the Dream are really going to be in for it, and they'll really need to use this experience to their advantage. Hopefully, by that point, Tiffany Hayes will be ready to play, but regardless, It'll certainly be another fun one, and I'll see you then.